It is a wonderful summer day. Now, I'm telling crazy stuff. It's not summer. It is still winter. It's the end of January. The sun is out. It is warm. I'm standing here in a t-shirt in the sun and I want to give you another update about things that have happened. It is slow progress because we still need to get the new car for Angel so that he can come here every day. This is in the works and uh, then he can be here every day and we can do more things. Right now we have been renting a car for one or another day and that of course we can't do all the time. So we limited this to special locations. So here this is very fresh, this is from today. There is a new fence post. And this is the first of uh, several fence posts that will go in that direction to create the back fence for the new dog enclosure. And this one is a little bit special, not only because it's a corner, but also because of that. If you look down there, you will see those two cables, but you will also see this concrete footer and on top there is this green metal fence post which is the corner post for that gate and right now the gate cannot be opened because there was an accident the blind sucker Hawaii got entangled into this then liberated herself but as a consequence she took out this uh, post there the one on the back that one there and then of course this was open and the dogs could escape, they did not. I caught this quickly. And uh, so there is a little bit more work to do and that work is basically to get rid of all this and then attach temporarily the old fence to that fence posts here. Then I can set this uh, other thing and then the gate can be open and then I can open it and drive it to there where the solar stanchion is and start digging the trench to lay down the water line and uh, the two cables, electricity and communication. So that is what I can start doing. And I can do this alone with no trouble. And I show you a few more things. Every single piece that is hanging here from the ceiling is accounted for individually. Nothing can escape. Each leg has a label with an identification number. Now Angel is taking one out to have a closer look. And here it is. You can see how yellow the fat is and you can also notice how it has shrunk. Now the weight is significantly less than when it was fresh. When you start cutting the hem it is important to keep this fat in order to close the cut surface again so that it won't dry out. To get your own leg of hem you can head over to our web shop and order some. There are two options for you to buy the hem. We offer envelopes with 100 gram of hand sliced pieces of hem and there is the full leg in the case of a front leg, it's about 4 to 6 kilo each. Families in Spain keep the leg in the kitchen and everybody cuts off a slice whenever they are hungry. And as I walk you there, the ground is uneven, I stumble a little bit. Um, I can show you this here, so this pile will soon be used to dress up the driveway. And I show you what happened there. But before I do, I can show you also this here. So if you are interested in becoming a volunteer and help us out a little bit, that concerns you. So here there was a pile of um, dirt and uh, rubble. And I removed this and used it as fill back there. i show you in a moment. So this is now more or less cleaned up. That piece I cannot remove because this is a very big boulder. And uh, I don't want to get it out there. So the idea is to fence this so 
stair from that wall, which is not very stable, but I cannot remove it because of that beam there. If I do this, the whole structure will collapse. So I have to stop where I did. So there will be a fence that goes that way to the other wall. So that this patio there um, gets also a fence on the other side and the dogs will stay out. So if you happen to be a volunteer and you sleep there in the cortijo, then you can go out at night and be in that patio and the dogs are on the outside so they will not molest you. So the rule with the dogs is the dogs um, stay in their enclosure when people are doing things here in the farmyard but at night we will let them loose so that they can do their job and that means we have to separate you from those puppies. So that is uh, why the cortijo gets a little courtyard that is fenced so that the dogs will not mingle with you. You might become friends but uh, some people are afraid of big dogs and uh, therefore it's better to keep everybody in their respective territory. So here's the other thing that we did. So you see a gate <laughs> that is sitting there in the middle of what used to be the entrance and to explain this better, I put myself here. So the next step is to put a wire mesh there for the fence. That material is sitting over there. And then this side will be closed. This will be the final installation. And on the other side, there will be a temporary installation. So we will attach some remnants of fencing material to this post here and then use a few metal posts that we can easily remove and connect it to the other gate. And then we have kind of a lock. So the idea is um, this is closed. The dogs are in the inside. Now you open that, drive in, close that gate and then you can open this and no dog will escape. That's the whole point in the very near future, so this is related, um, there will be another thing. So between that yellow post there, that's a marker post, a little bit to the right, there will be another small gate, a gate for a person, a main door basically. And then there will be a fence that goes from there to that main door. And the area here to the left will be a little parking spot there. And then there will be the house. So the house will not be part of the farmyard itself and therefore the Spanish Mastiff dogs can do their job as guard dogs for the farmyard. And here where the house is there will be a terrace. This is for the water um, tank, 10, 20,000 liters, I mentioned that before. And then I can come in and out by only using that gate. And only if a vehicle needs to go into the farmyard, then this gate will be opened. So right now it looks kind of crazy why I have these people two gates. Um, but once more construction is going on, then this all will make sense. So basically, let me walk you a little bit there. So here where I'm now walking, this is then the parking space under a roof. And between this thing and somewhere there, there will be a main door. And here to the left, this is going to be the entrance to the house. Of course, this is now drawing things in the air, but I hope you can follow a little bit. So if I step back a little bit, you can then see there is the house, the entrance, parking, and that is then the driveway to the outside world. And if I want to, I can have another type of dog that is more a city dog inside of the house. And that dog is then also separated from the Mastiffs, who are a different type of uh, dog breed. So that was that. And uh, here also a few little changes happened because I have been digging. And... Now I have to describe in words again something. 
that might not make that much sense to you if you're just watching the current state but I hope that I can convey the idea so here there's a hole and the idea is to make this area level with that area there on the other side I need to do a little bit of cleanup there and then we will build a retaining wall we do have the blocks over there from way back then so we build a retaining wall there and then we make a box so that we can put um, garbage, uh, garbage bins into that and now the idea is we use the pickup park it up there and then here connected to that wall there will be some sort of a lift and a pulley and then we can take those garbage bins out lift them up into the bed of the pickup and then take them out and we have to separate our garbage because the place where we have to um, deliver them to expects the garbage to be separated and classified so we will use bins that model or that mimic the very same system so that non-organic material can easily be removed from our place so this is a little bit getting ahead just to gain some material and uh, get it started and that material will then help me to fill this there more and more and there I can show you another thing that Aunt Helen and I managed to do after we set the gate we built this box here this is now the form for some concrete so this will be one of two concrete footers for the container so the container will then sit on top of that of course this will be level and uh, filled and there will be some rebar in it we used some scrap wood that we had um, and this will then be filled the next time we are together and the other one will be over there and of course we will fine grade this then also and you can see here on the other side that I'm placing the rubble that I can find here and there to raise this I have the string disconnected at the moment uh, this is not attached uh, well anymore but you can still see the level that I need to reach so there's still quite a bit that I need to do. So if I take you over there, you can see um, that I need quite a bit more material. I use the rubble there in the center where I know that this will be covered. And on the outside I will use better dirt because the idea is to plant vetiver there and I don't want the vetiver to sit in the rubble. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So when we have the bigger excavator here and dig the other pond or we do this with our backhoe depending on what comes first then we will have the material to make this nicer and ready for the second container but now that we have been waiting a little bit the circumstances made this so we have a delay that means we will only put the first container here that is enough and the second container this will come sometime later so that means the concrete slab there will be then the next big thing so that we can start building and i hope over the next three weeks all that stuff will fall into place and start happening what i can also share is here at cortijo angel right now is trying to get the window installers to come and measure so that all these windows will be replaced with real windows the same type of window out of pvc that we have there in our temporary house so this is a job to delegate to them they will take care of everything we don't need to do anything and then we can clean the scotty on the inside and start making it livable like I said in the other video about the Cotijo and then we can host people here at some point um, by the way as I see this here this 
is a storage thing so this does not go through this ends halfway and it's a storage thing but we will leave this untouched because it might come in handy it's pretty dry so there is no no problem it's, it's outside but uh, it is dry and you can see it has some mesh there so birds won't get in there which is why it is still clean it has a dirt floor and it's dusty but other than that it's, uh, it's a good place to store something so and this breach here in the wall that top it this will be closed with a fence the door keeps working once we are done of course that cable will also be removed we will have that trench here for the water line and uh, communication and electric cable and that will then i mentioned that before go over there and once we have this then the batteries from over there can then be moved but speaking about the batteries so i looked around i asked the guys from the solar company and i made the decision that we are going to buy new batteries they will be lithium phosphate pilontech batteries um, six of them and that will give us 27 kilowatt hours of storage for about 8500 euro and then we should be good and that system can then be extended by adding another pack of six or even one so it can be increased in 4.5 kilowatt hours steps and uh, that is then a safer way forward than with those AGM gel batteries they were good a couple of years ago but now everything is the other type and if we happen to start using sodium ion batteries that new kind i think it will still work because each battery has a bms and uses a can protocol to talk to the solar inverter or to the battery controller um, to be more correct and that means um, it is now easier to extend because now it's digital so the charge controller is not controlling the voltage levels anymore it is just talking to the bms and that makes it then easier so the only restriction is it has to speak the right can protocol and there are several that understand what sma's sunny island speaks so that's going to happen step by step and as you can see the whole point right now is to make this farmyard um, nice for humans while it is too cold to do plant stuff and uh, the big planting event with those 14,400 saplings is now being scheduled for the beginning of April so I was in communication with Life Terra and they said that they can do this early um, April um, they will not be the ones planting so that is us volunteers and a few hired hands we will see how this goes but early April is uh, the date there will also be a TV crew here they said they want to bring some Spanish TV crew because supposedly it's going to be the biggest Miyawaki forest in all of Europe and of course they want to celebrate that so the other Miyawaki's forests are very small there are maybe a thousand square meters while this is yeah between seven and eight thousand square meters so this is a big one well, this was a little bit of a surprise to see but uh, that is a nice thing and while i talk i went over here to have a look at the garlic the garlic is growing so that's uh, very nice and the chive is also there you see it it's also coming back it died back and now it's coming back so that's very good i am looking forward to fresh chive that of course is the mustard that grows everywhere in between there is a little bit of coriander but it will germinate because there are seeds in there and that i believe was our rucola salad that I never harvested. Let me try this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems that this is salad indeed. 
Yeah, it's other stuff also. Who knows? It might also be a wild variety of salad. But it was not untasted, the piece that I had. But I'm not really sure. And um, we need to harvest the beans there. There are some beans that we can use in the kitchen. So, maybe later today. I can also tell you something about the blind mare, Sakahawea, there in the background. Oh, if the camera wants to focus on her, there she is. So she is now here in this area and is moving around freely. So all what we call our zombie, everything that is there behind, uh, everything in the background. And she finds her forage there, and she's very happy. She's a very smart girl, and she does not run against things. She somehow figures that out with her other senses. And so she can take advantage of all the food that is there. So that's a very positive thing. No need to keep her in an enclosure. And here we have Mr. Cat. He is fat. He just comes to greet. Of course he has to stay on that side, because where I am there are the evil dogs, not right now, but he knows that. And there has been no incident so far. So that is very good. We are still holding off a little bit on getting the chicken, because the chicken coop is ready there. So we just have to put the electric fence around it, and uh, then we can go to Cordoba and get a few chickens. But this is probably something from March on, so still a few weeks away. So things are, are rolling. It's a slow start, but uh, things are happening. Like I said, when I made these other videos where I told you, oh, we have to pause, there is an issue, um, it's all solved. So it's now a question of getting back into, into the swing. <laughs> 